Okay, so this video is going to cover um, Chapter 2 of Groundwork for a Better Vocabulary. Um, I actually, unfortunately, don't have my textbook with me, so I'm not sure the exact page. But what I recommend is that you um, get your um, vocabulary book um, and have it out as you listen to this video, as we will be going over the answers of some of the questions in the book. And if you mark down your, your answers, um, uh, you'll have a record of it. The other good thing is is that as we go over this video, these are the same questions that you will be answering online. Um, so if you mark them down in the book, it, it'll be easier for you to do the online activities as well. Okay. Uh, so starting off with these words, um, chapter two, chapter two, um, we have analyze, attitude, category, contrast, critical, deliberate, excessive, fragile, frustration, and indicate. So let's go through the first one here. Analyze. Someone in the laboratory will analyze the blood sample to see if the patient has an illness. Before we can suggest solutions, we must carefully analyze the city's money, money problems. Um, and analyze means uh, to study. Uh, now, analyze is a verb. Now, it does mean to study, but it doesn't mean to study the same way that you would study for a test. We wouldn't say, I analyzed, I, I analyzed for the test, where you can say you studied for the test. But analyze means to study in the sense of um, to, to carefully look at something to try and figure out um, the reasons for it or how it works or something along those lines. So in the first example it says someone in the laboratory will analyze the blood sample to see if the patient has an illness. The reason that they're looking carefully at the blood is to find out if there's an illness, if the person has an illness. In the second one um, uh, it's saying we must carefully analyze the city's money problems. In order to figure out how to fix the city's money problems, um, we, need to, we need to analyze them. Okay, so be careful about uh, about this word in that even though it does mean to study, it doesn't mean the same, the, the common um, use of study meaning like for homework and that sort of thing. All right, our next one here is attitude and this is a noun. Athletes need to have a positive attitude. Even if they've lost the previous game, they need to come to the next one ready to win. Rudy came to the party with a very poor attitude. He was sure he'd be bored and wouldn't have any fun. So attitude means a way of thinking. Now, um, at, an attitude, in, in, if we look in the examples, it can be positive or it can be negative. So in the first one, it's saying athletes need to have a positive attitude. What this means is, is that um, uh, another word we could say for positive attitude is optimistic, meaning that you think that um, um, things will be good um, if your attitude is good. If you have a poor attitude, it means that you have a bad, um, that you think things will be bad. Um, oftentimes in classes, in ESL classes, uh, you know, in all classes, um, people's attitudes often affect the way that they, how well they do in the class. So if people come into the class and they're unhappy to be in ESL, they don't think that they should be in ESL, oftentimes they don't work as hard, um, they don't pay attention, and as a result they don't do as well. But if people have a positive attitude, like a lot of you guys have told me about, where you're really eager to learn and improve your vocabulary and all of this, uh, they tend to do uh, much better. So this is what attitude means. Our next one here is category, and this is also a noun. Um, remember, a noun is a person, place, or thing, or it can be an idea. When Jasmine was in high school, she didn't seem to fit into any category. She wasn't an athlete, a scholar, or a rebel. The small store had many jazz and rock recordings, but not much in the category of country music. So category means group. <laughs> Now, a category means um, it is normally a group, um, a particular, uh, a particular um, type of something. So in the first example, it's saying um, a category of student. We're saying what kind of student. She wasn't an athlete, someone who does sports, a scholar, someone who's really good at school, or a rebel, someone who is fighting, you know, sort of getting into trouble and fighting against teachers and stuff like that. So this this category is of students. In the second one, 
It's saying that the the category of country music, meaning that uh, it's we're, we're talking about different types of music. So the the category is is country music. Um, so um, another example, like in in class, um, we can say that there's there's different categories of students. Um, there's students who who um, have really positive attitudes. There's students who have really negative attitudes, and there's students who sort of had neutral attitudes. Um, here, our next one is contrast, um, and this one is a noun. <coughs> Now, one of the things that you're going to learn as we go through this book is that there's a lot of these words here that can have more than one meaning or can be more than one part of speech. Um, in this case, we're, we're talking about contrast as a noun, but it can also be a verb. So if you hear it used as a verb, um, the meaning is similar, but the usage, the use is different. So everyone is surprised to see that there is a contrast between Peggy's eyes. One eye is brown and the other is green. I was struck by the contrast between the fancy houses west of Main Street and the poor neighborhoods to the east. And a contrast in this case means uh, a difference. Now one thing we want to pay attention to with words is we want to pay attention to what words they're often associated with. And you'll notice in both of these cases um, we have between after contrast. Now this isn't a requirement, but it's certainly something that you will see um, commonly. So contrast really means you're comparing two different things and you're focusing on how they're different. So uh, if we look at the picture there, we can see that there's a contrast between the two colors. One is red and one is blue. Um, some of you may have already studied about a type of paragraph called a compare and contrast paragraph. And what this means is, is the compare is talking about the similarities and the contrast is talking about um, the differences, how, how things are different. Our next word here is critical, and it's an adjective. So an adjective is a word that describes something. Um, my boss can be very critical of me when I don't do my best work, but she's also quick to praise me when I do well. My aunt is critical of her neighbors. She calls them lazy because their house needs painting and their yard is overgrown with weeds. So critical means fault finding, and what fault finding means is that uh, you're looking for, uh, looking for the mistakes um, that someone is making. Now, if we look at these two sentences, we can say again that, that critical is often followed by of. In the first sentence, it's followed by of, and also in the second sentence. It's not always, but it, it often is. Now, um, uh, critical has more than one meaning. You may have heard, uh, if any of you are involved in, in medicine, uh, you may have heard of critical care. And in that case, critical doesn't mean fault finding. It means uh, very essential or very important. Um, but in this case, what critical means is that you're, you're looking for what things are wrong with something. So part of my job as a teacher is to be critical of the students um, because I, I need to point out what things you do wrong so that you can improve them. Not everybody likes that. Um, certainly in everyday life, um, we generally dislike people who are always critical because we don't need to be told what we're doing wrong all the time. At least I don't. Um, so this next one is deliberate, and this is an adjective. Now, one of the things we, I, I want to talk about, we'll talk about um, in class, is the difference between words that end in, uh, the, the different pronunciation of words that end in A-T-E. Now, this one is deliberate, and the pronunciation of the, at the end is it. But, some, but there's another word that's spelled the same way that's deliberate. Um, and the end is, is pronounced like eight. Um, eight uh, yeah, like eight. Now, the difference in meaning is of these, and this is generally true across a wide variety of words, is that when something ends in an eight sound, it's a verb. And when something ends in an it sound, it's either an adjective or a noun. Uh, we'll talk more about this as we go along. But Manny, Manny's pushing me was quite deliberate. It wasn't accidental at all. I'm sure our neighbors knew that the tall tree he was planting would keep the sun from our flowers. It was a deliberate, dirty trick. So deliberate.
here it means planned. Um, so this is not uh, not accidental, meaning that it's done on purpose. So in the first in the first um, example, it's saying the boy pushing me. He didn't push me by accident. He meant to push me. It was his plan to push me. Um, in the second one, uh, the, it's saying that the neighbor really wanted to. Um, hurt our flowers so he planted a, a very tall tree uh, it wasn't an accident it was it was on purpose okay next word is um, excessive um, and this is an adjective excessive speeds caused the caused the accident the truck driver was going nearly 80 miles an hour mrs hill's concern about her little boy's health is excessive she rushes, rushes him to the doctor every night. He gets the sniffles or scrapes his knee. And excessive means overly great. Now, if we look at this word, we can break it apart, and we can take off the I-V-E, and we can look at the word excess. And excess really means extra. We had the word surplus um, uh, in the last class, uh, in chapter 1. Um, and, and we said that sur surplus means more than what you need. Excess is the same thing, more than what you need. Um, surplus is more talking about um, producing. Um, and excess it just means that um, it, it's un unnecessary. Unnecessary. Um, so a lot of times we talk about people who have excess weight or excessive weight, meaning that they weigh more than they should. Um, so excessive is a negative a negative word surplus is positive but um excessive means that you have more there's too much of something so that it's a problem so in the first example it's excessive speed there's too much speed and as a result there was an accident um, in the second example the the mother's concern for her boy's health is excessive she's too worried about her little boy um, so sh she spends too much time um, thinking about that so it's a problem all right, fragile. Fragile is uh, also an adjective. The lamp is fragile, so when you pack it, please put it in a deep box with plenty of newspaper around it. Our bones become more fragile with age. That's why elderly people often break their hips when they fall. So fragile means breakable. Now, it would be easy to say broken, but that's not what fragile means. Fragile doesn't mean that it's already broke, that it's already been hurt. Fragile means that it would be very easy for it to break, so you have to be careful with it. So in the first example, a lamp or this light, it, it's very fragile, meaning that if it were to get bumped, um, it, would, it would break. Um, a, a great example of this is cell phones nowadays, is particularly the screens of cell phones. Uh, one of the reasons why it's recommended, or I would recommend, that you get a case, a sturdy case for your, your cell phone is because they're very fragile. Um, so if you drop it on the ground, like my son did yesterday, um, the screen, it's very easy for the screen to break. Um, you can also see the symbol there. Um, it, I know a number of you guys work in the, the airport, and you, you, when you see this sticker on, on a bag, uh, it means you have to be careful, careful with it because there's things inside that could break very easily. So here we have frustration, and this is a noun. And one of the things we want to talk about as we go along is word parts. And so if we look at the end of this, we see T-I-O-N. And pretty much most of the time when you see a word that ends in T-I-O-N or S-I-O-N or even I-O-N, it means it's a noun. And oftentimes it's, it's connected to a verb. Um, so in this case, we have the verb frustrate. And when we add T-I-O-N to make frustration, uh, we, create a, uh, we create a noun. Um, as Dan studied the instructions for setting up his computer, a look of frustration crossed his face. I'll never figure this out, he groaned. Uh, Elaine felt great frustration when she failed her driving test for the third time. So frustration means discouragement. So frustration means that uh, it, it's, it's the kind of feeling that you have when you're trying to do something and you're not able um, to achieve it easily. Um, 
and and it makes you annoyed about uh, trying trying to finish it. And we say it's discouragement because it, it may make you not want to continue trying. So in the first example, he's trying to set up the computer, but it's so difficult. He's like, oh, I don't even want to do this. Um, in the second example, the woman's taking the driving test uh, three times. So she's like, I'm never going to pass. You know, I don't want to do this. Um, frustration is a huge problem in oftentimes um, uh, in school and learning, you know, because some things may feel very, very difficult. Um, so you so you just want to give up. So you just want to give up. You want to stop doing it. Um, but I hope that you guys don't feel too much frustration um, in this class and that you feel very successful. All right. Here's uh, indicate. And this is a verb. So this is an example of what I spoke about earlier. I had I talked about the word deliberate, it, it, which was an adjective. And I said deliberate, eight, is a verb. So here we have indicate, eight, eight sound at the end. And this is a verb. Now, there there isn't a matching um, adjective indicate um, uh, to go to go along with this one, but we should know that when we hear the end of the sound eight, that we know that it's a verb. So Jeff's frown seemed to indicate that he was unhappy with our plan. The parking lot attendant pointed to indicate that Lonnie should drive the car all the way up to the fence. Um, and to indicate means to show. Um, in that case, it's, it, it, to indicate means to use some sort of of, of gesture. Um, um, often not spoken to tell someone some information. So in the first one, Jeff's frown, right? Frown is the opposite of a smile. So he's not saying I'm unhappy, but it's showing that he's unhappy. On the second one, the parking lot attendant is pointing, right? With his hand or with her hand. He's not, or, or she's not saying go over there, but is just pointing over there. Um, uh, in talking about cars, we we also we have uh, things that are called turn signals. Those are the things that you that you flip to tell if you're turning or to turning to the right or the left. They're also also sometimes called indicators, right? Because they're telling the person behind you or even in front of you which way you're planning to turn without you having to shout out, "Hey, I'm turning to the right," or "Hey, I'm turning to the left." or, um, you know, whatever that may be. Okay. All right. So I'm going to kind of quickly go through um, this, this check one. And this is the same one that you have, sentence check one in your book. Uh, so if you want to follow along with this, that'd be great. To avoid the blank of failing the driving test again, Elaine decided to take driving lessons. So she's trying to avoid, what kind of feeling would you have if you had to take a test again? Right? Uh, would you be happy about that, or would you be annoyed and want to give up? After losing every game last season, the soccer players began training this year with a poor blank. If their mindset doesn't improve, they'll have another losing se season. So, how what how are um, how are people's minds going to be if? Um, if, if they've lost every single game the year before. The first one here is frustration, right? The frustration of, of failing, right? She was disappointed um, and didn't want to fail again, so she took the um, driving lessons. And the second one is attitude, right? They had a poor way of thinking um, because they'd had a, such a bad experience the previous year. All right, a planned action is blank. So if we're saying that something if we have a plan to do something, what word would we use to describe that? Blank eating during the holidays led to my gaining three pounds. So what kind of eating is going to make you gain weight? Is it eating too little or too much? A road sign with a picture of a deer, blank, uh, that uh, deer often cross the, uh, the road at that spot. Um, so signs, what do signs do? Are they talking to you or w what's the reason for the sign? So the first one is deliberate. So something that's planned is on purpose, right? Deliberate. 
excessive eating, when you eat too much, you're going to gain weight. Um, and then indicate, signs indicate things. They tell you, they give you some information. Uh, when Maggie blanked her reasons for wanting to marry Joe, she realized they were not uh, good ones. So in, in this one, she has a bunch of reasons and she's trying to decide. She's trying to solve a problem, right? Should she marry Joe or should she not? So what word is this to, to look at something carefully, to, to study something carefully? Um, many teenagers feel their parents are too blank of their clothing, music, and friends. So many teenagers feel that their parents um, uh, uh, do, how, how do, how do teenagers feel their parents think of their clothing, music, and their friends? Do their parents like it and say, oh yeah, you have great clothing, great music, great friends, or do they dislike it? Do they find faults with it? So the first one is analyzed. When she carefully looked at, she carefully studied her reasons. Uh, she decided they weren't good. And then the second one, the parents were too uh, critical. Um, uh, of of their their clothing, they were disapproving of them. All right, and here's the last three. Something that is blank can be easily damaged. So, how would we? What word would we use to describe something that could easily be broken? Which blank of mu movie do you prefer, comedy or action adventure? So this is asking. We have comedy, action adventure. These are both different types of of movies. I was surprised um, by the blank between kind, gentle Bill and his impatient, bad-tempered uh, brother. So one clue here is we have between. So we're, we're looking at two different people. And are we we're talking about how they're the same or are we talking about how they're different? So the first one is fragile. So something that's easily damaged is, means easily broken. Uh, which category of mu movie? So this is about type. And this, the last one is a contrast. These two brothers are very, very different. Um, so we're, we're talking about the difference. Okay, so um, what you want to do is uh, go ahead and complete the, the um, online activities for, uh, for Chapter 2, if you haven't done that already. Um, and then you're going to need to do the, uh, the questions for it. Um, and then we'll have uh, we'll have the quiz in class over that. We'll we'll go over the questions in class beforehand. Okay. Good luck. Take care. Bye.